get the 2023 Clownfish comic books, including Crimson Wren Volume 1 and previously on Clownfish TV. We're offering a limited number of these books. In our second chance offer, go to shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. Welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and today I have Pinky Boo with me again. Hello. And we're going to talk about uh, Disney's Haunted Mansion movie. We did the Barbie movie review, so now we're going to review the Haunted Mansion film. And we'll start out with not doing spoilers, and now we can do more spoiler type stuff later on. We'll give you a warning before we do that. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe, and uh, I will give you a woohoo, but Pinky won't because she says she doesn't do that. I don't, I don't do the woohoos. Don't ask in Nobody the comments. Nobody else does. I, I read the comments last time. Don't ask. Okay. I'm not doing the woohoo. Sorry. It's just me. The only, I'm the only woohooer in the family. So anyway, um, we're going to talk about this movie. We went to see it on Thursday, and that was an ordeal because the theater we were going to, uh, we were supposed to go for, and we got there, and they were not open because they had we had storms the night before, and their power had been down. I think they had to download the films. So we had to hang around for three hours until seven. And we finally got to see the movie. And 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 what do, what do you think? I liked it. I liked it more than Barbie. I did too. I liked it more than Barbie too. Now, I'm again, I would reiterate about Barbie. Barbie is part of a good movie. There are some things to like about Barbie. But there are a lot of things that I thought was crap about Barbie. And I don't need people telling me what to think i'm not brainwashed pinky boo is not brainwashed we are not brainwashed you know, actually, by the patriarchy i'm actually um pre pretty left like not radical but i am more of a left person right so I i'm definitely not brainwashed by the quote-unquote patriarchy right some girl tried to argue they kind of basically argued I that saw. i was like that's not what's happening here and i'm sorry but that whole part was very uh you know, it, come on. It, and, then, and then equating it to, you know, the, the, the people coming in with smallpox was just yeah, absolutely. And also, like, the smallpox thing wasn't really controllable. Yeah, I know. This is just, it was just dumb. But anyway, we saw this one. And we both liked it better than Barbie. Now, I do want to point out, I am a huge Haunted Mansion fan. I know Pinkie Boo is also a Haunted Mansion fan. I do love Haunted Mansion. So that plays into it. However, I do want to make it clear that this movie does a really good job that if you are not a Haunted Mansion fan, if you have not ridden the attraction, it's not your thing, um, you don't know anything about it. It doesn't matter because they still explain the story enough that you can follow along and not be a fan. But if you're a fan or you ride the ride or stuff, there's a lot of Easter eggs in it that'll make it more fun for you. So let's do non-spoilery type reviews just what did you think in general like you know you can you can talk about things that you liked about it in a general sense i think the casting was really good everyone seemed to be having like a lot of fun with their characters mm -hmm. and granted they seem to be having a lot of fun in the barbie movie too but i just feel like the first half of the barbie movie was good and then the other half ruined it for me but this movie it's a little slow at the start but then it gets really good really fast and it makes sense like it's slow but for a reason yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are, are supposedly getting mad about the casting on this, and I don't understand that because um, they never, it's never presented in a, oh, look, it's not white people ever. Not once. No. It, it's just like, like we say about how movies used to be, and we wish it would be, you know, organic diversity. It's just that characters happen to be diverse, but it's never mentioned. And that's what this does. They happen to be diverse. They have different kinds of characters. It's from New Orleans. What do you expect? Yeah, and also... Um, back to the Barbie movie, they did the same thing. It was diverse, but they didn't say anything about it. So I feel like if you're mad about that, it might be more that you're mad about diversity rather than them shoving stuff down your throat. Right, because, I mean, um, I don't want to talk about the Barbie movie too much because the Barbie movie just ticks me off. But yeah. in this case, like, yeah, there's characters, and we have, you know, some of the cast is white, so the cast is not white. And it, it's completely fine. And it works Danny well, DeVito. huh? He said, I love Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito is fun. He is fun in this film. And I, I don't, under, I guess people were mad about that, apparently. And I want to point out that they never bring it up. Like, it is never, it's just like, hey, we happen to be this way. It's not like, you know, hey, you have to accept diversity and inclusion. It's not like that in any way, shape, or form. It's never mentioned. 
I never even gave it a thought till I saw other people complaining about it. And that's how you want it to be. You want it to be done in a way that you don't think about it. You're not like, oh, oh, I have to think about that because of, you know, race issues or things like that. And you don't have to because it's not relevant. It's just like it used to be where, hey, it's a good movie and part of the cast is like this and part of the cast is like that. And it doesn't flip and matter. So anyway, I want to point that out because I guess people are complaining about that. And it's not like that at all. They're just mad. I don't know what the, I, I guess you can't win no matter what. Anyway, so yeah, the film is good. It's it takes place in the in the Disneyland mostly. It takes mostly takes place in the Disneyland haunted mansion in New Orleans. Um, so they tie a lot of the culture of New Orleans into the to the story, which of course they do. And um, it's it's a really good story about family. I think it's a good story about loss and grief, and it's okay to be sad but don't let it consume you and pull you away from the world and how you can come back from that. And I think that it does that well. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. I, I also think it does that well. And I think it could also be a good statement about mental health and how, even if you're really down, there is always somebody who's going to be there for you. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, you can just leave yourself there or you can take a step forward. And I think that, and, and that sounds like depressing, but it's done in a way that it's, it, the movie isn't a depressing movie. No. I mean, you have these themes running through it, but it's funny. And it, it's it's very Haunted Mansion, the ride. They have a lot of Easter eggs. And you have these moments where you laugh and then there's moments where you want to cry because it, it does get these points across. It is a good movie, in my opinion. I, I agree. I um now don't worry me in the comments for this. I am a fan of the Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion. That's okay. You're allowed to be. So is your grandma. Yeah, I'm actually a fan because of my grandma. She made me watch it, but I'm glad she did. Anyways, I do like that movie, but I definitely like this one more. I think it's more accurate. It makes more sense, and it should be something that's tied to the Haunted Mansion name. The other one. It was good, but it wasn't really Haunted Mansion. No, it was more like an Eddie Murphy film that took place in the Haunted Mansion, where this one, the Haunted Mansion itself, is a main character in the yes. in the film. So it's not expected to do as well as Barbie, obviously. Um, it's not even in as many theaters. I think it's in like 3,700 theaters, where Barbie's in like 4,300 theaters. So it's already like not even in as many places as Barbie. And like I know the theater we were at, they had it on two screens. Um, for that one so it's not going to do as well i think they're guessing like 25 million for the weekend but i do recommend going um if you go out to to uh, rotten tomatoes it's interesting the scores are actually going up like the audience scores were lower than this um initially and it is increasing all these numbers keep increasing um every time i check it it goes up more so even though the critics gave it a 42 percent I don't think audiences are going to agree with them. I think some audiences are, but I think it looks like a lot of people are not agreeing with them. I don't know. It's kind of like a Super Mario Brothers situation or one of those movies where the critics hate it. Because, you know, when they hate something and talk shit, it's just, that's just because it's true. But they're already out. They're like, oh, my God. The audience scores on Barbie, review bombing, you know, because it's never, it's never, that they, they, everybody else review bombs if they're honest. It's just, you know, this is how it works. Critics are always honest. So, um, critics just hate anything actually fun. I don't know. It seems that way. I mean, you occasionally get one where everybody agrees, but like, you know, if it's not like some deep narrative, actually, it seems like the, when there's movies that are, um, really ham fisted, they're like, oh my God, that's amazing. I mean, Barbie again is not, but they're like, that's an amazing thing ever. And when it's just fun for fun's sake, oh, it's just awful. <laughs> so, um, we're going to move forward here and we're going to tell you to go see the movie. It's actually really good. It's a lot of fun. I think um, Neon said it reminds him of how old Disney movies used to be. Like, you know, even like before 2010 where you used to have just a movie because it was a good movie, happened to have diversity. And it was just a fun film and it wasn't about agendas. And that's what this is. So if you want a fun movie, I mean, I don't think it's any worse like than Ghostbusters as far as like the characters or anything being scary. If you're worried about taking no, your kids. No, I don't think it's any scarier than that. And also, I'd like to point out the original Haunted Mansion movie was also a mostly black cast. Mm -hmm. so it's always, it's always Cause it been. Was, yeah, because where his location was too. Yeah, it's always been a diverse cast for the Haunted Mansion movies. So you can't say it's like an agenda. Yeah, I know. But, you know, they will. So um, we're going to move to spoiler territory. 
you've been warned. I'll give you a few seconds to turn this off. If you don't want to be spoiled because you want to go see the movie, then, you know, shut this off now. Um, come back to it after you've seen the movie. If you don't really care and you want to know what happened, then stay tuned and we are going to tell you. I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. three. Okay, now we can talk spoilers. Yeah. So this film, it starts out with... Um, let me go back to my image here. So we have different characters, and I don't know how to say his name. Is it like Keith? The, the, his character was a is a, a like an astrophysicist, and he meets this woman who's a tour guide, and he ends up marrying her. But you don't know until later. But um, he looks all happy when he meets her, and then you then you, flash, you fast forward to him like drinking and not getting out of bed and taking his, running her tours and you know acting like an a hole. Um, but like. There was still comedy. It was funny. It, it yes. was funny. It was funny. Like, oh, your name's Carol. My name's Carol. Oh, my gosh. He's like, don't care. Every, so, Carol is a common name. Yes, Carol is a common name. So he clearly is a skeptic. And he said he's been to all the haunted houses in the area. And there's no ghosts. Nothing. He said, I'm doing this ghost tour, but there's nothing in any of these houses. I spent days there. Nothing. And as it turns out, he's got this camera he invented um, that can actually take pictures of what they call the ghost particle and he gets mad he goes i never called it that the media did and it could take pictures of ghosts apparently um but it's never worked and he's very you know upset because his wife's his wife's gone and his his career got thrown away for this chase in this you know camera thing and he kind of threw it away too because his wife's gone and he's just a miserable person and you know we have that to the beginning and then we go to rosario dawson and her son showing up to the to the mansion Oh, yeah. The son comes up to the door and it opens by himself and he's like, ugh. And then we get this like stretching hallway scene. And I'm like in the theater. I'm thinking, oh, this movie's going to be super cliche, isn't it? Yeah, you kind of wonder if it's going to be. It's going to lean too heavily into Easter eggs, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And then the mom comes in and the little boy's scared because there's this like suit of armor following them around. And... The mom's talking to him. He's like, sweetie, it's not haunted. And then the suit of armor pops up behind him and she looks at it and she's like, okay, we're leaving. Yeah, it's like, nope, we're out. You know. And then they run out of the house and they drive off really fast, which is how anyone would react to that. Right. And they explain this. Like, then they have the hat box go say, you'll be back. Because apparently whatever someone comes across the threshold, um, you get attached. They attach to you. So... Whenever someone takes off and leaves, a ghost follows you home, which is part of the Haunted Mansion story, and a ghost will follow you home. Ha, 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 ha. And, and they do. And, and, like, I don't know. I can't remember if this is in the Disney version, but at least in the Disney World version, it has the part where it's like, hurry back. Yeah. The death certificate. It, I think it does in the Disneyland, too. We only wrote it the one time. I, yeah, I it's been only, a while. But they once. tie it into lore and the fact that they have uh, the Captain Culpepper Klein is one of the ghosts that are haunting. And he's, you know, if you see him in the queue at Disney World, he's the one that has the cripple that shoots the water and stuff. And he was one of the characters they were going to base the Haunted Mansion attraction on at one point. Yeah, he, okay. he and his wife were going to be the main characters of a Haunted Mansion at first. And obviously they changed that, but... Right. So anyway, then Owen Wilson shows up at, at this guy's house. He's, you know, he just walks in and there's a cat, which I thought the cat thing it comes full circle, which is sweet. And... Um, he brings the cat in. He's like, he's like, that's not my cat. And he's like, oh, he's just been hanging around your house. I thought he wanted in or she. And, um, he gets the guy to come along cause he knows he has the camera and he's like, she's going to give you money if you show up and we're trying, you know, come to the house. He doesn't tell him that you can't leave after you get there. So he goes to the house and Rosario Dawson's like, you know what, you know, just go. I can't do this to you. And he's like about, he'll take the money because he thinks it's all bunk anyway. And he goes in and his camera's not charged. So he pretends to take pictures. He keeps making, <laughs> yeah, he keeps making these things where he pushes the button and he goes, <laughs> he's like, click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah. Like he's doing something and he takes all this money and then he's like, he scribbles on a notepad and drawing pictures and he's like, yeah, you know, you don't got any ghosts. You're fine. And she's like, oh really? And then he leaves and that's, Culpepper Klein haunts him and brings him back. So he comes back to the mansion and then, then he finds out like, oh, well, he actually, his camera's charged and he gets a picture of the, the sea captain. And then he's like, um, he brings his camera back to the mansion, sea captain too, and they go back to the mansion. So they keep adding to the cast. They bring in Harriet. Um, she's not very happy when she finds out uh, that 
you know, that she's cursed too when she walks in. Because again, Kent, which is Owen Wilson, did not tell anyone that you'd be stuck there. Right. He deliberately doesn't tell anyone. So she's not happy. She leaves and comes back and she's like, oh, hell no. And then they go and they find out that they need, they find Madame Leota. She's trapped in the ball. Turns out Master Gracie was trying to contact his wife and kept having seances, even though Madame Leota kept telling him not to. He kept doing that. And every time he did, he kept bringing more and more ghosts into the house. And then um, he kills himself because he thinks he's talking to his wife, which ends up being the hat box ghost pretending to be his wife. Comes up later. Yeah. Um, so they have to go do something. They have to find out who the hat box ghost is. Uh, to get rid of him. So they they go find Danny DeVito's character, who's a professor. And he actually wants to go. You could talk about that, Pinky Boo. I think I'm yeah. done talking. He actually wants to go, but he um, slips and says he wants to go before he has heart surgery next week. And they're all like, oh, no, 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 no. And then there's this whole fight scene in, like, this Japanese restaurant. And um, they're trying to steal the information he has because, like, he studies haunted buildings in Louisiana. So he's, they're trying to steal all the information he has so they can defeat this hatbox ghost without letting him in the mansion because, you know, it's scary and he's, and he's got a heart, heart condition. Attack. Yeah. Did you catch the outfit he was wearing? I mean, you're supposed to be wearing that because he's a hibachi girl, like a raincoat and a hat. It's actually the outfits like they put on the, the ghost in the cemetery to make the light reflect off them. They're, they're wearing like clear ponchos and stuff. That's what he's wearing. I thought that was fun. So they did that. And, and then... They they take his information and they find out that uh, there's another mansion that this ghost came from. His name's Alistair Crump, which is fun because Raleigh Crump, and that he's the hatbox ghost. They have to find his personal item to banish him, and he's trying to get one more soul. If he gets one more soul, then he has all the power and everybody's trapped forever. It's, it just goes on. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But they go to this other mansion, which turns out to be the Disney World Haunted Mansion. And it's a, it's this guy's house, and they're doing tours. And that's where you get... And Renona Ryder. Yeah, that's where you get Renona Ryder and, and David Levy are there. And they 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 send the poor kid into the basement. Like, there's a, they found, they, they're found trying to find his head and because they need to find the hat. Because I guess the servants turned on him and killed him after he was killing them. And there's this crawl space under this fireplace, and they have to send the the, hit the kid down because he's the only one that can fit. And I had to laugh because when Squid King was little, um, we actually locked the door to the house and couldn't get in. And the only way you could get in was the one place the basement was still open. Um, we didn't realize we had left it open, and it was open. So the only one that could fit, because uh, Pinky Boo was way too little, the only one that could possibly fit through there, we thought, and could get the door open was Squid King. But he was like six or seven. I think he was like six. And he did not want to go, <laughs> understandably. So poor Neon had dislocated his arm and squeezed through the crawl space to go let us in the house. <laughs> and I had to laugh when they were, this kid's like, uh-uh, I'm not going down there. And I, we, he looked at me, I looked at him. And we're like, ah, Squid King. <laughs> you know? So it was funny. Um, you want to talk about some more stuff? Um, and then they... Find his top hat in a basement because the kid eventually does go down. They find all the graves of the people because it's like a whole point that these people were disappearing and rumors spread that the guy was killing everyone. They find his top hat and they drive back to the mansion. Well, throughout this movie, the kid's talking about talking to his mm -hmm. dad. And so he has to wait in the car while they do this ritual thing. But then he has his like notepad open. And his quote unquote dad is writing to him. And just like Master Gracie, it is not his dad. No, it's the Hatbox Ghost. So you find out then that the whole time, like, he character thinks that the little boy's dad's still alive, doesn't know what happened. He just knows that they aren't with the dad anymore. And he's like, oh, you should talk to your dad, not knowing that the dad was dead. Um, but throughout this, throughout this, we also learn about his wife and what happened, and she was in a car accident and all this stuff. And then you start seeing how he's – it turns out that the ghost is actually after him because he's the most grief-stricken. And then when he can't get him, he's going to go after the kid instead. Yeah, because the kid was more vulnerable and willing. As the yeah, you had to have someone willing to stay. So, yeah, and I think at the end, of course, you know, they're going to defeat the Hatbox ghost, and, but the ghosts decide to stay. I'm not going to ruin everything, but it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of Easter eggs. Like, the Easter eggs abound in this movie. If you are a fan of the Haunted Mansion, you're going to have a good time just finding the Easter eggs. 
Like they even had the stretching room and stuff. It was really fun. Yeah, and into the and then the upper room in the ceiling where they had the guy hanging was there, mm-hmm. and um, then the, like the paintings came to life, and they had like um, and when they were going into the one fireplace to find his head, they they look like the gargoyles that blocked the in the queue with the chains. Um, the one part, Danny DeVito and they had Harriet were both in this chair that drove him into the street to get him out of the house, and um, it looks like the it looks like the doom buggies. Well, it was across. Well, the one chair looks like the doom buggy. The one chair looks like the chair by the endless hallway. That was the, uh, I think that was one of the Roy Crump designs. Mm-hmm. And they they definitely have nods throughout the entire film. But it's not like just like it's another story that takes place in the mansion. It's like the mansion is part of the story, but the story is a good story on its own. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then we find out at the very end that the Kent character, which again Owen Wilson, he was like. A priest this entire time he's not actually a priest no he works at a costume shop <laughs> yeah and then he just ended up getting stuck there but he is successful in getting on the ghost side and helping them win yeah the ghosts join up with him and they defeat the hatbox ghost because they're tired of being a slave too basically and it was it was it sounds it, it just it's really fun it's just a fun movie it has a lot of emotional aspects to it too but the grief part, I mean, I was crying. I'm not going to lie. But I was also getting excited every time I saw a Haunted Mansion reference. And Dion just kept looking at me because I'd be like, you know, quiet clapping like, yay. <laughs> you know, every time I saw something, I was like, yeah, yay. they even had the dueling brothers from the painting. Oh, yeah, that was funny. Like in, in the ballroom scene where they turn and shoot at each other. Yeah, they had, she uh, She kept saying, I hate going down this hallway because every time I go down this hallway, I have really bad stabbing pain in both my sides. and I don't know why. And it's because they're supposed to be shooting at her. Um, and after midnight, they bring up a point. Like, uh, they, they, they're okay-ish until midnight. And midnight, they can't leave the one, the stretching room, which is their living room, because they do. It, it zaps them into other places of the house. Um, and it's not a pleasant experience because something bad happens. But they start realizing that ghosts aren't trying to hurt them. They're trying to run themselves. Like, they're trying to hide from something. And they're trying to hide from, you know, the hatbox ghost. It's actually really good. Um, if you listen to hold all this and it spoiled the movie for you, well, I'm sorry. I told you not to listen. Yeah. And I would also like to say that if you have never ridden Haunted Mansion before and you want to go watch this movie, I would definitely recommend watching both the Disney World version and the Disneyland version before you go see this movie. Oh, yeah. You can watch ride-throughs. You don't yeah. have to even go. You can watch the ride-throughs and if you want to do that. You don't need to, to, to be familiar with the ride, though. Yeah. But it's more fun, I think, if but you you're, are. But you're going to get a lot more references if you've... If you've seen it at least once. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, So what would you rate this one? I would give this one a solid 8 out of 10. Yeah, I was between 7.5 to 8 out of 10 as well. I think it's a lot of fun. I'd watch it again. And for me, that's saying something. If I say I would watch this again. Actually, my my sister and my nephew are going today. And I was kind of like, oh, I'm too busy. Or I'd go go with them and watch it again. (laughs) I'd go with them and watch it again, too. No, you have to go to work. And I have to go do other things because I still have my other jobs. Maybe we should sneak away and and watch it again. We'll go back and watch it. Because it was. I'd watch this one again and again. It's it's a lot of fun. And I think the the more you watch it, the more you probably catch. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they have a lot of stuff hidden that we didn't even see. So... I recommend it if you want just a fun movie for the sake of having fun that feels like an older Disney movie, this would be it. Yeah. Um, for sure. Obviously, it's not the best movie ever. It's a Haunted Mansion movie, but it's still really fun. And it's definitely a nice, refreshing break from everything we've been seeing in cinemas recently. Like we were on the way to the cinema and I was like, I'm just, I swear if this movie is bad, I'm going to just not get excited for movies anymore. And then I turned out to be very pleasantly right. surprised. Because Pinky Boo was very, very upset when Barbie wasn't, was only part of a good movie because she was really, really looking forward to it. And then it was like, damn it. I get that place too. I'm just like, I'm not even going to bother going. I think that's what's going on. I think a lot of people just are noping out of films. They'll wait till they're on streaming or digital or whatever. And I think the reason they did this one so early, people are like, why did they do this one now and not in October? A couple things. One, they switched time slots with the Marvels, which Marvels was supposed to be out now, and this was supposed to be out in November, which was weird. But they switched the time slots. But I think they did this because by the time Halloween rolls around, they're going to have DVDs. It's going to be on streaming. It's going to be on VOD and stuff like that. I think that they're banking on that to make up the difference. People will buy it as a Haunted Mansion, like, you know, for classic Halloween film. Yeah. And I also think... Part of the reason it's not in October 
is because it's going to be um, competing with much bigger movies, much more hyped movies. Like That's true. FNAF, Dune, and Saw. Yeah, well, do well, yeah, in October because November, m- 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 uh, the Marvels is going up against Dune and stuff. So yeah, no, you're right. It's going to be like Halloween yeah, movies. So I think oh, is FNAF in this in October? FNAF is October 27th. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, it makes sense. So, so they did it earlier. If it was in October, it would be like the same day as FNAF, and I don't think it would have done well. I think another reason they did it, I'll tell you what, I think another reason they did it is because they're pushing Haunted Mansion stuff this year. They did it last year, too, like at Lowe's. But this year, they're going to push it for, I Spirit Halloween has a bunch of exclusive stuff that's coming. If you go out to piratesandprincesses.net, I have an article on it. They sent me uh, a press release about it. They're doing stuff. I know um, just in general, like uh, Target's going to have Haunted Mansion stuff. Um, we're starting to see it online. Lowe's has a, a bunch of stuff. I bought some of the inflatables. If you go out to piratesandprincesses.net, you can see them. They have the clock. They have the tombstone. Um, there's an organ player this year. They have, um, I didn't buy them because I didn't know where to put them, but they had the uh, grave digger as an animatronic. They're doing all kinds of Haunted Mansion tie-ins. Um, so it makes sense that they would do it now because all that stuff's going to start coming out probably next month in August. And that gives them, you know, time to tie it together, try to boost sales. I'm sure that's what they were thinking too. Synergy. So anyway, recommend going to see it. I also, I also recommend going to see it. Um, I definitely think if you want a fun movie, I'd pass on Barbie and go see this instead. Because Barbie is fun at the beginning, but it just gets really depressing. And this one has some sad elements to it, but mostly overall... It's fun. Danny DeVito is hilarious. What's the cholesterol on that woman? I know. You, you'll get that reference. Okay, the bl- water balloon comment, though, wasn't Danny DeVito. But that one I could have done without. I'm not going to ruin what that is. But I was like, no. But uh, yeah. It's kind of funny. Though. But Danny it's DeVito, funny. he was, yeah, they're talking. It, it, they're just talking about his wife and, and what, you know, she liked to eat. Let's put it that way. And he's. Like they're like talking about how sad he is. He just blurts out, "What was the cholesterol on that woman?" And it was, it was funny. <laughs> so anyway, we gonna wrap this up. Yeah. So please like and subscribe, and definitely go see this movie if you're interested in it. Um, and if you like it, great. If you don't like it, that's okay too. You don't have to. And yeah. we'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's the reef.support.